Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen. Civilian drone hits firefighting aircraft over Palisades fire. Vertical Aerospace completes first piloted thrustborne flight. And Starship Flight Test 7 targets Wednesday, January 15th. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen program a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight, from electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. Civilian drone hits firefighting aircraft over Palisades fire. A firefighting aircraft operating over the Palisades fire in LA is grounded and out of service due to a mid-air drone strike by a civilian drone not assigned to the fire. The aircraft, a Canada Air CL-415 Super Scooper, landed safely with no injuries. The left wing of the aircraft was damaged by the drone at about 1 p.m. on January 9th, and the FAA said it will investigate the incident. The agency said in a statement, quote, the FAA has not authorized anyone unaffiliated with the Los Angeles firefighting operations to fly drones in the TFRs. The FAA treats these violations seriously and immediately considers swift enforcement action for these offenses, end quote. The FAA has activated several TFRs in the area to protect firefighting aircraft, and it said, quote, all other aircraft, including drones, are prohibited from flying in the TFRs unless they receive authorization, end quote. Eric Scott, spokesman for the LA Fire Department, said, quote, we would like to remind everyone that flying a drone in the midst of firefighting efforts is a federal crime, and it's punishable by up to 12 months in prison or a fine of up to $75,000, end quote. After the break, lawsuit suggests discrimination killed a USAF contractor. For over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated an even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon, www.sportplane.com. Ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 Remote Pilot Certificate or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our Next Gen Minute. Lawsuit suggests discrimination killed a USAF contractor. The family of Stephanie Cosme, a civilian contractor who was killed after being hit by a U.S. Air Force MQ-9A Reaper propeller, recently filed a lawsuit against Sumeria Systems. They claim the company's employee exhibited racial and gender discrimination while training Cosme. Stephanie Cosme was working for Sumeria Systems, which was contracted by the U.S. Air Force to support its unmanned aerial system programs at the time of her death. She had been receiving training from testing director Derek Kirkendall. Secret Service sidesteps FAA to use drones in D.C. The Secret Service is overriding FARs in order to use drones around D.C. this month. The UAVs are serving as an additional security measure with Inauguration Day chaos rapidly closing in. Though Inauguration Day is likely the team's primary concern, there are three national special security events happening in the month of January. The first was the certification of presidential election results on January 6th. The second, former President Jimmy Carter's state funeral, which occurred on January 9th. Delta partners with Joby and Uber for multimodal travel. At CES 2025, Delta Airlines' CEO Ed Bastian announced in his keynote address the rollout of its AI-powered digital assistant, Delta Concierge, built into its Fly Delta mobile app that enables travelers to seamlessly select a multimodal option through Delta's newly formed partnerships with Joby Electric Air Taxi and Uber for ground transportation. Concierge is designed to provide personalized assistance in real time to travelers throughout their journey. Powered by generative AI, it anticipates their needs to offer contextual guidance and perform actions for the user. Atlantic acquires Ferrovial Vertiports. 
Atlantic Aviation announced the acquisition of Ferrovial Vertiports from Ferrovial, a global developer of infrastructure, reinforcing Atlantic's commitment to lead in the creation of sustainable infrastructure as it supports AAM by incorporating EVTEL infrastructure and expertise into its nationwide FBO network. Vertiports are quickly becoming part of the aviation industry's lexicon and are specific areas dedicated to supporting EVTEL aircraft operations, such as takeoff, hover and landing in urban, suburban and rural environments. That's it for today's Next Gen Minute. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Vertical Aerospace completes first piloted thrust-borne flight. Vertical Aerospace announced that the testing program of its prototype VX-4 took another significant step by completing low-speed forward maneuvers during its first piloted thrust-borne flight. Vertical received approval from the UK Civil Aviation Authority to broaden its permit to fly, which enabled the progression from hover to low-speed flight maneuvers at altitude using thrust generated by the VX-4's tilting rotor system. Chief Test Pilot Simon Davis performed roll, yaw, and spot turn maneuvers. Completion of these maneuvers at the company's flight test center made Vertical just the second company globally to achieve this critical step using a full-scale vectored thrust EVTOL aircraft. Thrustborne flight is designed to assess the aircraft's stability battery efficiency, control characteristics, aerodynamics, and structural and dynamic loads and performance across various speeds. This knowledge enables further assessment of how the VX-4 behaves in real-world flight conditions. Stuart Slimson, CEO of Vertical Aerospace, said, quote, Starting the year with this milestone is a fantastic achievement and testament to the dedication of our team and partners. Becoming one of only two companies globally to conduct piloted thrust-borne flight maneuvers in a full-scale vectored thrust EVTOL underscores the progress we're making towards our Flight Path 2030 strategy and our vision to transform the way the world moves, end quote. After these messages... Starship Flight Test 7 targets Wednesday, January 15th. Welcome back. Starship Flight Test 7 targets Wednesday, January 15th. The Starship 7 test flight has slipped back two days since the last expected launch date. SpaceX has confirmed a new target date of Wednesday, January 15th, following a weather delay. The launch is scheduled for 4 p.m. Central for now. SpaceX will be introducing a significantly upgraded next-gen ship for this test launch. The forward flaps are now smaller and repositioned away from the heat shield to reduce their exposure to re-entry heating. The propellant volume has been increased by a full 25%, and a new fuel feed line system for the Raptor vacuum engines has been installed along with an improved propulsion avionics module that will control the valves and reading sensors. The avionics went through a total redesign and now have additional capability and redundancy to accommodate more complex missions. The launch will also deploy 10 Starlink simulators similar in weight and size to the next-gen satellites. The company said on its website, quote, While in space, Starship will deploy 10 Starlink simulators similar in size and weight to next-gen Starlink satellites as the first exercise of a satellite deploy mission. The Starlink simulators will be on the same suborbital trajectory as Starship, with splashdown targeted in the Indian Ocean. A relight of a single Raptor engine while in space is also planned, end quote. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.